What I've got underneath our visualizer today is an animal. And all I need you to do, first of all, is to type in the name of the animal and then press send, OK? So here it is. And we can see all the responses so far have the right answer with frog. So well done, everybody. I'm going to ask you a question which I'd like you to answer using your text. The question is, how has that animal, the frog, adapted to the habitat that it lives in? It might be to do with its body, how it's changed its body. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can just delete and text in again. Got lots of responses coming in. Lots saying webbed feet, one at the moment saying camouflage, one saying skin. Most of you went for feet, webbed feet. Um, who's number 15? Uh, Angela, can you explain how that animal's adapted to its habitat, what your answer is? It helps it swim. OK, so by having webbed feet, it helps the frog swim in its habitat. What is its habitat, Ghazala? Living in a pond. Living in a pond, a river, water, or around water. Hina has put green, which would come under our camouflage. So it's camouflage to, to protect itself from predators, and also it's got webbed feet to help it swim. OK, well done. Right. Now, for the final part of our lesson, we have a little quiz to see how much we've learned throughout this topic. It's a, a simple six-question quiz, all to do with birds, OK? And how they've adapted to the habitat that they live in. Right, so question one. This is a true or false question. So as soon as you see it, you can text in the answer. All birds can fly. All birds can fly. See, most of the answers are already in. Look, you can see your number at the bottom if you've sent it in. And 16 of you said false, and you were all correct, so well done. Put this food chain in order, starting from the bottom upwards. We've got A would be the mole, C would be the worm, B, dead leaves, and D, owl. Few more seconds. And I'm going to stop it there. B, dead leaves is at the bottom. And then we have the worms, followed by the mole and the owl. So B, C, A, D was the correct answer. And over half of you got that. So well done. And let's have a look at our leaderboard. Which fire engine will get to the fire first and is the winner of our quiz today? I do believe it's tank number 18. Well done, Jasmine Ram. With 25 in second place, who's 25? Well done, Corindeep. And 12 in third. Number 12, well done, Sergeant. Very well done to you all. Look, it's interesting to see that you combined using the Genie Visualizer with the uh, GeniePad response system in your lesson. How do you find they work t together? Well, with something like the science lesson we've just done, it helped to show different objects, such as the bird's beaks that we saw. And you could zoom in on the bird beaks. And then with the Genie Pads, you could, through um, a system called Text and Drop, you could text in an answer and ask a question about the beak and they could text in either a one word answer or a, a sentence in and it appears on the screen so you've got the visualizer producing the picture and then the genie pads giving the children the answer writing the answer on and then you can drag the answer onto the page with the image and then you can group the different sentences together and look at the correct answers the wrong answers and discuss which ones we think are right and which ones we think are wrong. Have you found it a great way of, again, instead of it just being you and the pupils, you become a team who are working t together? 
yeah, it's very much the children are taking control of their learning really and they can see instantly whether they're right or wrong and they know all throughout the lesson with the genie response system that uh, what they're doing is right, whether they're on task, whether they need to change something. So they know what they're doing. And it, 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 I presume it also it helps you because you can then you have this information. What do you do with this information that you get, the responses that you get via the GeniePad response system? It depends how you've set it up, but with something like the text and drop, you can drag drag all the responses on and put them into lists. Uh, with other such things such as uh, a PowerPoint uh, survey or question questionnaire, where you're challenging the children to answer questions, then. Uh, they can text in the answer and you've got instant feedback whether they're right or wrong. And the system calculates how many right answers, how many wrong answers they produce. And at the end of it, um, you can get overall feedback through reports and other things and you can print them off. And you, you know exactly how well that child has done uh, in the task. Do you find that once you've got those responses, really it helps you plan and construct the next lesson? Well, you can, you can look back and see which type of questions or which area of the learning the children haven't, haven't grasped. Uh, there might be s some part of the science where none of the children got the right answer or only a few. So for the next lesson, you know that you can focus on that part, maybe in the start, in the start of the lesson, and you can do some work on that because they didn't actually get it before. What about the pupils? What do the pupils get out of it, do you think? Uh, the pupils seem to really enjoy the GeniePad system and they are very, very motivated to do the lesson, regardless of their ability. They really enjoy working with them. I think they like the instant feedback, uh, and they, they know for their own learning whether they're on task or not. And it becomes a bit of a game at various times. You can turn it into a game, and the children really like that. Because, again, you know, learning is fun, especially with you know, pupils who maybe, like you say, don't always maybe feel confident to put their hand up in a, a class setting. Actually, this gives them the ability to, to get involved. Well, for inclusion purposes, it's fantastic because every child gets to share their answer. Whereas without them, if you're asking children on the carpet to put their hand up, you might have one or two responses. With this, you can get a response from all the children and the children don't necessarily see their response. You can actually keep it private so you can see their response and then you can tell which children are on task and which aren't, and you could give the children with the wrong answers a little more support. And that, I think, is a fantastic part of the system because it does give children confidence that you know they're not going to be ridiculed or, or laughed at if they get a wrong, wrong answer. It just helps you. It does very much so. And the whole focus is on not to ridicule the child in any way. There, are, there is a system that you can get the children's name to come up um, and that's okay in cer certain respects, but it's, it's better if you've just got the handset number and the children know that their response has, has come in and uh, on the actual display on the handset it actually tells them whether they've got a right or a wrong answer. Well so even if they can't see on the screen whether they've got it right, on the, the genie pad itself it gives a little tick or cross to show you, to show them whether it's right or wrong. So they, they can help motivate themselves. Exactly, really? and they can think about getting the right answer next time. Yeah. And they, they always know there's another question coming. How does it work with regard to literacy? You were talking about being able to text in words and sentences. I should, I should imagine that's another key skill involved in using the pads. Well, in literacy, it's the amount of things that you can do is endless, really. Just simple things like spelling tests. You could do spelling tests on there, um, up to unlimited amount of uh, spellings, and you've got instant feedback. The children know straight away how many how many marks they've got and you can print that off that day and give it, give it to the children to take home to show their parents. You could use it through the visualiser, you could show a picture and the children could text in some words relating to the picture and you could create a th thought shower around the picture and have lots of different feelings for the character in the story. So it's endless really for literacy. So when you were say planning today's session on birds, how did you go about deciding what sort of system you were going to use? Certainly not at all that you'd, you'd use every lesson, but there's certain lessons which l would lend itself to using the visualiser, some to the genie pads, and then some like you saw, uh, using both at any one time. I find it's very good for, especially the visualiser, for showing 
up close things like you saw with the, the grubs, getting the grubs out of the, the wormholes. It was very good that I could model it at the front. The children could all see it on the big whiteboard uh, and that helped them understand the activity so there weren't any issues with how to make the little paper uh, beak. We've had the visualizer for over a year and I'm finding the more I use it, the more confident I get in using it. I tend to use it in at least one lesson a day particularly in things like science, but also in English and maths as well. It's all about getting confident with using the machine, and once, like anything, once you're into it and you've used it and confident using it, you'll use it on a daily basis. Did you find it that difficult to pick up initially using the, the, the sort of Juniper response system? It, it took one or two lessons, for the, both for myself to get used to it and also the children to get used to it because it's something totally new. So the first two lessons with the children were them enjoying using the keypads, getting used to all the different responses, because it's just not texting, it's a true or false. You could type in sequences of numbers, uh, yes or no answers. So it's getting the children used to using the genie pads before you even attempt to do any sort of assessment with it. But you would say that the pupils get a lot out of it. It obviously helps you as a teacher cutting down, I should imagine, on, on prep time and, and feedback time. Cer certainly with the feedback time. I um, mean, if you use it wisely enough, it cuts out with, with all the marking and your assessments there already for you. And with certain things like the visualiser and showing children what to do, the children can see it up close. So there's less questions from the children saying, how do I do this? Because they've seen it firsthand on the big screen. So Luke, did you and do you find it easy to, to install the system and, and get it up and running? To physically set up the machine, not, not a lot of time at all. It's just taking it out of its box, a couple of leads, and then the initial thing was getting the children to have their own handset. So they're all allocated a certain number with the, ha with the handset, and each child knows which handset they are now. So they just take the handset and it's all set up. Um, the other part is the the PowerPoint setting up, which takes a little bit of time once you've to get used to it, but once you've done it one or once or twice to actually set up the survey or the questionnaire for the children, it can take not very long at all, uh, five ten minutes to uh, complete that. So once you've allocated a number to a pupil, then that number and that pupil are are, are together, and all the information about how they're studying, I presume, is, is kept documented in one place for you to access. That's right, because the handset is allocated to, they've got the number, but also their name allocated to that handset, that ev every f bit of feedback from that handset goes to their name and you can print off all the data for their name at the end of the school year or topic and uh, print that out for their use or for the parents or even for your records.